speaking of international fellowships in uh, in the united kingdom over to you rashmi uh thanks karan i would like to thank uh, uc for inviting me for this talk so today i'm going to talk about international fellowship uh, in the uk uh, most of the questions that come regarding an international fellowship in the uk start from um how to shortlist the course up to how to actually reach there so that is what i'm going to give you an overview about so first you shortlist the course and then how you reach the final destination that you have in mind uh, that you want to do a fellowship in this particular place so the different types of fellowships that are available for us as indians to do in the uk would be a clinical fellowship a clinical and research fellowship um a research fellowship which will not have any clinical work or surgical exposure or a proper phd which is anywhere between 3 to 5 years now when we say clinical fellowship then you don't have any research sessions in that you just have clinical uh, slots and you have some admin slots where you have to do a little bit of admin work for the department when it is a clinical and research fellowship then you have a balance of both so you might have 2 to 3 days of clinical work and 2 to 2 2 to 3 days of research work a research fellowship is full time in the lab and clinical research only and phd again depends on the topic that uh, you are pursuing then how would you want to shortlist a course is first you've decided what kind of fellowship you want then this is one of the websites uh, idocs.uk which i used to visit quite frequently to see what all opportunities are there it gives you details about the fellowship which is available including the mentor who would be supervising you and the duration of the course and the royal college of ophthalmologists also has this particular uh, list which also gives you very similar information like the idocs uk where it gives you again which supervisor will be there what is the university and how do you contact them and what is the duration of your course once you have shortlisted then how do you apply for the course so for applying there is this website called jobs.nhs.uk which advertises all the uh, available fellowship slots so it is it comes under a uh, jobs category for them so it will uh, show you whether you have a cornea fellowship a cataract fellowship whether it is 12 months or 18 months or 6 months and uh, the good thing is it always uh, gives in description of what kind of work you should expect and what kind of work they are expecting from you uh, including the salary and working hours and everything else so then you could look at these um, this website and then shortlist your jobs and then start applying now on this website you will see usually two kinds of fellowship one is a post cct fellowship and the other one is a just a clinical fellow in ophthalmology kind of a thing and this one is the one that you are looking for because wherever they mention that it is a post cct fellowship that is the one where we are not eligible cct is completion of training certificate of completion of training so that is not equivalent to ms ophthalmology cct is a training which is done there so if you have done your res residency there then you are el eligible for this kind of fellowship if you have done your residency in india then you need to go for other fellowships which do not mention that they want a post cct person but then they can write something like they want somebody who is frc of part 2 or equivalent and we are eligible for that equivalent portion so ms of tal is considered equivalent to frc of and the second criteria that usually these fellowships will have is that you need a full registration and a license to practice from the general medical council so similar to how we have indian medical association uh, they have the general medical council and you need a license before you start seeing their patients and start operating there and of course gmc license would be important if you are looking for a clinical fellowship or a clinical research fellowship not for the other two So the next step is how you go about uh, applying for your GMC license. So there are different routes which are available for applying or for a GMC license. First is the PLAB test, which is the Professional and Distinct Assessment Board exam. It is in two steps. I'll talk about it. Second is the sponsorship program that the UK has through which I had gone, and third is approved postgraduate qualifications. so before you apply for a gmc license through any of these routes there is an english exam called the ielts test which we are expected to appear and clear 
usually it is the academic ielts that we have to give there are different kinds of ielts exams which are available of which the academic ielts is the one which we are expected to clear as uh, clinicians just to get the license it has four four parts of the exam usually done on the same day one is the reading part in which they just give you a paragraph and you're supposed to answer all the questions they will assess how you interpret english language uh then there is a writing part uh, where they give you a graph or a picture and you're supposed to describe it in limited number of words most of it is doable uh the listening part is where you listen to a conversation here you might require a little bit of practice because you need to get used to the accent that those people use and then you need to answer those questions and then there's a speaking test where somebody just sits in front of you and they talk to you and uh, they assess how your communication skills are so your overall score is expected to be more than 7.5 and individually you should score a more than 7 and then you are eligible to apply for a gmc then deciding on the route that you want to take like i mentioned there are three different routes which are available for you to apply for the gmc so once you have applied and cleared your ielts then uh, first thing is the plap test which is the first route which is very common uh, people uh, appear for this exam most often so there are two parts first is plab part 1 which has mcq questions so they'll give you a short scenario and they'll ask you mcqs on it and you have to answer uh, it's a 3 hour test once you clear first part then is the second part which is a structured clinical exam where they are going to assess the clinical skills that you have and you are expected to have clinical skills equivalent to a second year resident in uk so uk has a seven year residency program of which the first two years are called as the foundation year so you are expected to have that kind of clinical equivalence so there they give you 18 short scenarios clinical scenarios and then you have a mock consultation it can include an emergency sometime there are different stations that are created and you go in and you perform your consultation and they observe how you are doing once you have cleared plab exam it is necessary for you to apply for your gmc application within 2 years after that you have to uh appear for the exam again that is important it's the same thing for the ielts as well so if you clear an ielts exam your score is valid only for 2 years the next route is the dual sponsorship scheme so when they say dual sponsorship means there are two sponsors that you have when we talk about sponsor that means there's a person who has trained you and who are ready to vouch for your clinical skills and your ethics so in a dual sponsorship scheme there is a uk sponsor which is uh, involved and there is an indian sponsor the criteria for your indian sponsor is they should be involved in your training of ophthalmology so ideally it should be your um, thesis guide or hod or somebody from your department who has actively seen you in your residency and was involved in your training and is ready to give you a certificate saying you are okay with your clinical skills your uk sponsor usually is the person who is recruiting you there or is your fellowship supervisor there now why there are two routes is because not all uk sponsors can directly sponsor you there is a list on the gmc website uh, where there is a list of sponsors so some universities or some individuals also can act as uk sponsors directly but route b is for people if you have a fellowship in a place which is not a uk sponsor so they act as your primary uk sponsors and your secondary uk sponsor is the royal college of ophthalmology which coordinates with them and gives you a certificate and your indian sponsor again will be the same and the third route is if you have an approved post graduate qualification for example you just decide to go and do your residency there for 7 years it's your choice so you will have a ccd or you appear for those exams like frcs and frc oft so the approved qualifications are frcs of ophthalmology edinburgh and glasgow and mrcs glasgow and MR mrcs edinburgh and the royal college in these cases sponsors your gmc license but you after even after your gmc license you still need to have a frc of if you directly want to go for a um, fellowship there and then they work towards your visa once you have a gmc license usually the university uh, helps you get your visa it's the hr department that goes through it so the if you are going through a dual sponsorship scheme then you get a certificate of sponsorship from them saying okay all the sponsorship things are fulfilled and you get a tier 5 visa uh, that um, and if you are going through plab or the royal college of ophthalmology then they sponsor the entire thing so they sponsor your visa via the letter of appointment and then you are working for a tier 2 visa which is a workers visa one minute remaining ma'am 
Yeah, I am done. And yeah, so this is the summary. So first you shortlist the course, then you apply for your job. Once your interviews are done and you, you know that they are ready to offer you a job, you can give your IELTS exam, decide on the route of your GMC licensing, acquire your license, and then they arrange for your visa and then you can reach there. So the conclusion is that training can be either at a senior level or junior level. You can obtain uh, whichever position you want if you apply at the right places. It Most of the people think it is only research programs that are available there, which is not true. You can go in for clinical opportunities as well. Most of the programs have one to two openings a year. So some will be once a year, some will be six monthly. And then each type of fellowship will have its own rules and timelines and requirements, which will be very clearly told to you. And accordingly, you can make your choice. Thank you very much. I'm happy to take if anybody has any questions. Excellent.